Would you like to learn how to make a really nice pointy cone like this for model rockets? This makes a great tip to turn a, a nose cone that has a rounded tip into one that has a pointy tip. I'll show you that in this video. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. Today I want to show you how to take a piece of paper and roll it into a cone for um, a tip on a rocket. Now, we're going to be selling a rocket kit called the High Rock, um, and it uses this nose cone, but it's actually a scale model, and the real rocket had a, had a pointy tip. So we're going to give you a pattern to create a nice point on the nose cone. Um, and so what I wanted to do in this video is show you a way of doing that using a 3D printed uh, tool like this one right here. Uh, now previously I've done a video on how to make um, a paper cone um, and I'll put a link to it up here somewhere here on YouTube where you can watch that. Um, that did not use this tool that was 3D printed but um, because 3D printing is now available in such widespread use um, and it's easy to get something that's 3D printed. I'll show you how to use this to really make a, a, a nose cone with a sharp tip. Now, I like this method a lot better, but it does require that 3D printed part. Now, a lot of people will say, well, why don't you just 3D print a tip? Well, the answer to that is you're going to end up with some kind of shoulder on the end that's going to look ugly, where paper is so thin that it will blend in and it will, will be barely noticeable. Um, so first you're gonna need this um, 3D printed tool and we'll have that STL file available so that you can download it from our website for that particular kit and then you'll need to get it 3D printed yourself. Um, and then from there, uh, we will give you the pattern and this is what the pattern sheet looks like. And you can see you've already created one. Um, and this will give you the right shape to go with this tool. So to, to start, uh, we need to cut out this pattern. And you'll notice on the pattern um, that it has an overlap piece, but the overlap piece comes to a point at the front. And that's kind of important, um, as you'll see. Um, so first, uh, the way I usually cut them out is I use a ruler for the straight edges uh, just to make sure they're nice and straight. And I'll have to go this like this. And you see I always put the ruler on top of the part so if the blade goes away, it doesn't go into the part. But we give you two patterns on that particular kit. And, you know, they're paper so you can always just photocopy them and make duplicates. And in fact, that's what I did. <laughs> All right, so for the, the curve section, oh boy, that didn't cut through. My, my blade must be a little dull. Yeah, always start out with a sharp blade. <laughs> this blade is not very sharp. Okay, much better. All right, so then we're just gonna freehand this curved edge. And I worked very slow just so that, you know, my blade goes where I want it to go. Okay. All right, so our next step is we want to kind of pre-curl this. Um, what we're looking for is a very nice, smooth edge. Um, and that, you know, it, the paper is flat, and we got to wrap it around this cone. Uh, but you, as you see, when we start wrapping it, it, 
doesn't want to go very well. Um, so if we kind of pre-curl it a little bit, particularly the edges, um, when you do it, you just have to be careful not to fold it because you don't want to get a crease in it. If you get a crease in it, um, you might as well start with another sheet of paper because <laughs> you're never going to get it to go away. What we're kind of doing here is reorienting the fibers on the paper, kind of stretching them out a little bit. Um, you know, if, if you take your finger and, you know, you got the curved part of your finger and that's what we're using here, kind of reorienting those fibers. And when you get it close, um, then we're going to use the cone, the 3D printed part, as a pattern. And so now I'm just going to kind of roll it around this pattern. And it's, it's the very tip that's going to give you the hard time. You can see it doesn't want to curl there. So we want to just kind of work it, you know, gently, but we want to kind of, kind of, kind of work, kind of, kind of pinching between our fingers to get it to go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of tape and this is going to kind of help me because it's going to hold one edge down so that I can work on the tip by itself. Now you, want, you don't want it like super sticky um, because if, if it's super sticky when you peel it up it's going to peel away fibers of the paper. So you want to make it um, a little bit uh, less sticky, you can push it against the forehead, your forehead, and what it does is it picks up a little bit of oil from your skin. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to wrap it around, and I'm going to get this end right here, and and on my little tool I have a lip, and I can really push the edge of the paper up against that, and then I can wrap it there. You can see I can pull it real tight, and that's what we want to do. We want to pull it real tight. And at that point, I can take my tape and push it down. So now that that's down, now I can start working along the length of it. And, you know, trying to curl it, trying to curl that in, and then roll it, roll this tip. Okay, so getting close here. I got a little bit of a crease there. I don't like it, but... <laughs> okay, so now here I'm using my fingernail and I'm kind of rolling the edge in. Okay. Curl that very tip. All right, I like that. All right, so now we're ready for the glue. You can see my overlap got folded. I think that's where my crease came from. So if I push that back down, I think that'll be okay. Now we're gonna take some glue and we're gonna put it along that overlap tab. I only want a little bit. And I'm going to spread that glue out. I want to make it as thin as I can. I only need enough to uh, for it to grab the other side of the paper. Anything extra is going to ooze out and cause a mess. So again, I'm going to start at the the fat end, and I'm going to really pull it tight. Okay, so that's nice and tight. And again, I'm going to take my tape as my little handy helper here. Okay, 
and then work up along that seam. So I'm, I'm kind of pushing down here on this side, on the bottom side, and then pulling around this way. Okay, so now I want to kind of burnish it down hard with my finger, give it a lot of pressure. And this is why the tool works so well, because I can give it a lot of pressure. Uh, really push those fibers into where I want them to go. Okay, so I got a, like, you can barely notice it, but I can see where it creased before that's showing up. So now I'm liking it pretty good. You can see as I pulled it up here, I pulled up a little bit of fibers from that paper. That's okay. Um, you're gonna paint it or whatever. Um, now on this tip, I can take a little bit more glue because there's there's so little overlap here at the tip that I want to you know put a little bit of more more glue there. I'm taking most of it off. I just wanted to get it wet so that the glue penetrates into the paper uh, and we'll, we'll glue that very tip edge together. The other thing that you can do is now you can roll it along the table. Um, since this has that lip on it, I have to go over the edge of the table and I can roll it this way and kind of form it, form that tip and that tip looks really good. There's a little bit of glue on it because I can still squeeze a little bit out. So at this point, um, when you get it to where you want it, <clears throat> let it dry completely while it's on the tool. Um, the reason for that is the glue, because it has water in it, um, it's gonna wanna shrink. And when it shrinks, it's going to want to deform. Um, so the glue is going to shrink different from the rest of the paper. And then what happens is if you look at it, um, you can see that this is not completely circular right there. It's got a little bit of high point. Um, and that's because of the glue in there. Um, on this one, I pulled it off a little bit too early where it hadn't had a chance to dry. Uh, the other thing is once it's dry, now you have this nice tool underneath and you can sand it with some like light grit sandpaper, maybe like 400 grit sandpaper to take off that just that little bit of an edge uh, where it was overlapped. And so that will just kind of blend it in a little bit. Um, so let it dry first and then put that on. Um, and then at that point, you can call it good, or you can take it to the next step. So on this one, um, we have it on the nose cone here, but it doesn't, at the very tip, it's still hollow. So, um, so what I'm gonna do, I'll show you, I'll put a line here on the nose cone. And then if I put the tip next to it, you can see that from approximately here forward, there's nothing in there, and it's this is the weak part. So if you want to strengthen that, what I would recommend is using some epoxy clay. <clears throat> uh, we sell two varieties. Um, this is the Fix-It, and the other one is called Bond-Aid. Um, the difference is um, this takes longer to cure, where the Bond-Aid will be hard in like five minutes. Uh, so on this one, I wanted a little bit longer working time um, than five minutes uh, because you have to have just the right amount of epoxy inside. I only want to fill that much up with epoxy. If I fill it up to right there, what's going to happen is when I push this in, it's going to ram it forward and that epoxy has got to go somewhere. Um, it's like a ram, um, and so probably what's going to happen is it's going to um, burst that seam apart. It's going to, they call it blowing it up. 
you're going to blow up that tip and the epoxy is going to ooze out the side. So I want to put in just a little bit, test it out, make sure it's not coming out the side because that would be bad. Um, and then if there's, and if it's not, then I can put in a little bit more and try it again. Um, so to use this stuff, you just take an equal glob of each part. So that looks pretty close. And you're going to just knead it together like dough until it's a nice uniform color. And typically, you know, I like to give it like a minute. Um, but I'm going to rush it right here. So, you know, really flatten it out, fold it over, flatten it out, fold it over. Do it in different directions so you get a good mix into it. Okay, so then I'm going to take a little bit and say, okay, is that going to be enough to fill it? I don't know. So I'm going to take that and drop it in. And I'm going to take a wood dowel. And I want to start with a, with a really skinny one because I want, really want to get it up into that tip. So I'm pushing it in. I don't know if you can see this from the camera up above me. Okay, so I can feel it getting hard right up in there. So I'm going to put it on, test it. Okay, so then I look inside. I can still see where I pushed it with that. So I know the tip is not pushing it. So that means I can put in a little bit more. And this time I'm using a fatter dowel. Pushing that up in there. And I can see that I'll probably need just a little bit more. Okay, so a little bit more. <laughs> okay, so I, I can, I'm feeling along here and it feels a little bit squishy. Um, so actually I can put in a lot more because what's happening is this this is not straight. This has a curve to it. Um, so even though that the tip might be, and I can see from the inside, the tip is starting to indent in there. Um, so now at that point, um, I need to fill along the side. Um, so I didn't mix up enough epoxy. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be right back and we'll try it again. We're going to keep filling it until we get it so it doesn't feel squishy. Okay. So I'll put some more in there. So now I got more in there. You gotta be, now you gotta be really careful. Um, Cause now you want, what actually you want is for like this to go around the edge. In fact, I might even try that. Wants to stick to the table. <laughs> if I had a piece of plastic, like a plastic bag, um, I don't think this is going to be quite perfect. It's, I don't think it's going to slide as easy as I want. Because, you know, as I push it in there, I want it to slide down along here. It's got to go all the way up to there. Which is why I don't think it's going to be quite perfect, but I think it's going to be a lot better, particularly at that tip. Oh, that's much better. I like that. I just learned something new here. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I like that. So I'm going to leave it because I like it. 
Um, so what I would come back, and I didn't bring it with me, is some super glue. Um, I could then take super glue, um, the very thin stuff. It's, it's like water thin, which means it's thin like water. You don't thin it with water because you can't add water to super glue. But you can get the water thin variety and then uh, you can just put a drop there and it will wick around and it will lock this edge down. Plus, that plus the epoxy up in the tip here is going to make this uh, bond very well to this nose cone. Um, and then it's going to be nice and strong and then you have this nice beautiful tip on the nose cone. So that's my technique using the 3D printed tool to make that nice perfect tip um, out of paper. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to our channel. Um, if you want more videos, go check us out. Um, our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.